Welcome to the George White to Speak Show. It's big dog season. It's pressure season. And today we got a special guest. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a special guest. A big dog. A real, real big dog. I'm talking about a pro bowler. I'm talking about an All-American. I'm talking about a big 12 player of the year. I'm talking about Jason Verrett, a.k.a. Fever. What up, big dog? What's up, baby? Man, appreciate I appreciate you for camera. being here, man. You appreciate know. you for being here, man. Man, you flew all the way from Cali just to be with the big dog. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good, bro. Black. That's, good. That's good. Complain, man. I appreciate you having me. That's good, man. That's good. You know, I know a lot of things been taking place, man. And I salute you everything you do, man. You're a big dog. You stand on what you stand on. Like, tell me, how does it feel to overcome adversity? Or what's some of the opposition you face in life? Or as a football player? Yeah, I done been through a lot, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With my adversity going through, you know, even starting from college. Mm -hmm. I've been through a lot in college. But getting to the league, you know, dealing with uh, two ACLs, mm -hmm. two, two Achilles. You know what I mean? And it took a toll on mm -hmm. me, you know. And uh, I just feel, you know, when you're dealing with adversity, uh, the best thing you could do is just get direct with the situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I had to learn that over my experience, dealing with the injuries, right? You know, kind of getting away from the why. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not always asking, asking why this, why that. Get direct and, and get direct with the man above and say, mm -hmm. where? You know, where are we going with this? You know what I'm saying? And I had to learn that over the course of my career, dealing with my injuries, just to be way more intentional and direct mm -hmm. with the situation. I like that you said intentional. And not everybody's intentional, but... You know who you are and what God called you to be. Okay. And you bounce back like nothing. And, like, what type of support you had? Who who helped you get to that level that you are at today? And I credit my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, having family there is always uh, supportive. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, obviously that day-to-day -day is what's most important, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, I credit my mentor for me for that, mm -hmm. you know, just giving me that dialogue, that mm -hmm. understanding, mm -hmm. you know, and I learned from him. You know, a, a definition of a man is being mm -hmm. anything and everything at any given moment. Mm -hmm. So I learned that. And, um, you know, I credit him, you know, still to this day. You know what I mean? Just just, just the perspectives that he been giving me as a man just to kind of deal with the trials and the tribulation. Gotcha, gotcha. And you from Cali, right? Uh, yeah, I'm from the Bay. Born and raised. What high yeah. school you went to? I went to Rodriguez High School. Uh, did, yeah, obviously, four years there. Left. Went to JUCO in Santa oh. Rosa. That's out there in Northern California, too. Um, I did a year there, and then I did three at uh, TCU. So tell us about, like, the transition from high school to JUCO. You know, a lot of people say, man, they're afraid to go JUCO because they're afraid they're not get the next opportunity to go play for a big D1 school. Yeah. Now, see, I ain't even know nothing mm -hmm. about JUCO, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, at my high school. So I actually had a, a guy that came in to try to help coach. He was only there for, like, three weeks, and then they, they let him go. Um, but he was, while we was up there training, in my senior year, he was telling me, like, man, if you don't get no scholarship, come holler at me. It's the JUCO that I mm -hmm. can, you know, let you know about. So fast forward, I didn't have no high school scholarships. Mm -hmm. So I uh, still was in touch with him throughout the season. And uh, he took me over to Santa Rosa, me and, like, two other players that I played with. Went to one of the games, hollered at the, the head coach there, and uh, was telling me, like, man, no matter what, we can put you out. Even mm -hmm. smaller school, it could be a D2, right. a small D1 AA, like, it could be anywhere. We're going to make sure you get a scholarship. So that's just the route that I took. You know what I mean? I went in there as a receiver. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh, they ended up switching my position to cornerback. So throughout the spring ball, I was playing both ways and then ended up just going with with, with the uh, cornerback spot. And, uh, yeah, it worked out for me. I see you ver very versatile. Not everybody can do everything, but yeah. you can. Yeah. That's why you feeble for a reason. <laughs> you know, so do you feel like well, there's a big difference between playing juco ball and D1? You went to TCU, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nah. Uh, Juco, yeah, I would just say the toughest part going from high school to Juco, well, for me, it was, you know, we didn't really lift like that mm -hmm, in high mm -hmm. school. I didn't know nothing about lifting weights yeah. and nothing like that. So <laughs> when I got to Juco, that was like the next phase of, all right, now we got yeah. to lift, you got meetings, things like that. Um, the biggest transition was from Juco to college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's just because you're dealing with, you know, all, I would say, some of the best athletes mm -hmm. around the world. You know what I mean? Juco is kind of like, you deal with a little bit of talent, yeah. but not everybody go to Juco. Right. Like, a lot yeah. of people go from high school to college. So that was the biggest transition from there. Because mm -hmm. now it's like, at, at Juco, we only ran three different covers. Yeah. I didn't know about <laughs> quarters and yeah. half court. I didn't know about all of yeah. that until I got to college. So that was the transition there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so uh, that the, the, the route for me, man, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's been lovely, but I can't complain about it. So what, so... 
what helped you keep that like that dog in you? You know, even though you know you, you face a lot of opposition, adversity, you know, trials and error with your injury, but I want to know like how you teach yourself to bounce back outside your mentor. Like, how do you stay focused mentally? But I just think it come from experience, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, experience is your best teacher. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 I've been through a lot to where I experienced so much to where the balance, I was imbalanced, I was out of control at times, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I, I credit the experience that I went through to be able to get me where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, was, it, was, it was challenging because you're dealing with a bunch of uncontrollables, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and, and that was probably like the hardest part is because, you know, you're doing everything to put yourself in position to prevent mm -hmm. these injuries from happening. And, you know, but that's just life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have to understand life in that format that, you know, life don't send no warning shots. It don't, man. You know what I'm saying? It Sometimes don't. stuff just come mm -hmm. and hit you. You know what I mean? And, and that's been, that's just been my, my whole entire life as far as my career mm -hmm. in football. I've just been hit with so much different opposition and obstacles and trials, man. But I'm just cut from a different clock where, you know, I ain't quitting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I ain't You're giving big up dog. nothing. You're yeah, a big dog. That part. So um, regardless of what it is that I'm dealing with, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to stand ten toes down in it, battle through it. You know, I might dump my head here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm going to always climb up to the top and make sure you know, I get to where I got to go. You know what I mean? I let my dedication determine my destination. Ooh, so say it again. I let my dedication determine my destination. Talk that talk. Y'all hear him? Yeah. We ain't focused on the, listen, I always say too, man, I don't focus on the uh, the location. I focus on destination. So I love that, man. I love that. But you know, you know you've been a father and stuff like that. You know, you got family. How do you balance like your professional life and your home life? You know? Yeah. Um, I got two kids. Mm -hmm. You know, my little boy and my baby girl. Um, my little boy, five, baby girls, two, are about to be two in August. Um, that's, that's been an up and down, up and down battle for me just because at a point in time before my daughter was born, when my son was first born, I tore my Achilles. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, the third injury in a row. Mm -hmm. you know, I, mean, I had my ACL, another knee surgery, then my Achilles. And uh, I, was, I was lost, bro. Keep it on, I wish I was lost. I was in a dark, dark, dark place. You know what I mean? And uh, my son... You know, uh, being that he was just born, you know, didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. But just the smile that he had on his face was always that that spirit that I needed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To get me kind of out of the way where I was thinking, you know. But uh, it was a challenge only because, you know, I was, I was at a place where, you know, the dark moments was about to make me do something that I probably would have regret mm -hmm. doing. You know, but the, the, the credit to my baby boy of just being there, being intent with me mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, just putting feelings on me that I didn't, I didn't necessarily mm -hmm. knew how to feel at that moment, just dealing with what I was dealing with. Um, but he kept me focused, you know, he kept me focused, kept me determined, kept me driven, mm -hmm. and just brought more of the character that I got in me mm -hmm. out of me, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that was, that was the balance in itself of having, having my kids like being there. That's good, man. You know, sure. it's a blessing to have kids, you know, your kid change you and make a big impact in life in different ways, man, because they have it to me as well. So I salute that big time, big dog, yeah, for sure. you know. Like, but if you if you had to talk to a, a young cat or someone who in college or on their way to NFL or a rookie who went through it's like a similar situation you went through, what's some what's some key value words that you would teach them or impute to them if they facing the same trials and error going through what you went through? Time, mm. everything takes time. Um, you know, you can't really rush the process, and I would just say get more intent with yourself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I think your intuition is, is your key to success, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And being inside and tuition means to learn, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So get in tune with yourself, mm -hmm. you know, self-talk is very important. Looking at that man in the mirror, very important. And um, that's the best advice that I could give him is just understanding that things take time, uh, you know, and, and in between time you create habits, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So stay in tune with the habits that you're creating you know, while you're going through the process of, of what you're dealing with. And, you know, uncontrollable is going to happen, man. It's life. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always say, like, you try to think certain things, like, why this, why that? And, uh, you know, I always say, man, it's 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 just like the, the little girl that's in the park, man, and get caught in a crossfire mm -hmm. and die. You know what I mean? That's life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She didn't deserve that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, it's a lot of things that I got, that I dealt with that, I, I feel I didn't deserve, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be life if I didn't go through them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I embrace the scars that I got on my body. You know what I mean? Like, those, 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 those memories I could look back on mm -hmm. 
know that I would stand it throughout that time. Mm -hmm. You know, cause like, I'm, let me speak on this as well. You know, let's say, you know, you got a big game coming up, you know, how do you overcome receiving bad news or something before the game? How do you, you know, how do you stay tunnel vision and focus? You never know what life gonna give you. Yeah. We're gonna dish out. Yeah, I done went through that. You know, I done, I done had a different level of experience when it comes to uh, dealing with, with fans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I got exposed my first college game playing on national television mm -hmm. against Baylor. You know, uh, and it was hard. You know, I'm going to school. I'm, at, that, at that time, I had just got Twitter. Uh, <laughs> So I'm going to school and there's people on campus, you know, saying all different type of things. There's people on Twitter saying all different type of things. So I had a choice to make, like, either I'm going to embrace what I'm going through and, and, and step into the battlefield and, and come out on top or I'm a fold. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I had times where I felt to go that direction, mm -hmm. to fold and to quit or to, to back out. But, you know, it was, it was conversations that I had with family. You know, I had a conversation with my coach at that time. So I had good support, mm -hmm. you know, to where it didn't make me fall all the way back, but I still knew who I was mm -hmm. and what I wanted out of this whole entire situation, mm -hmm. why I went to JUCO, mm -hmm. why I chose TCU, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Why I wanted to be the big dog that I am, mm -hmm. you know what talk I mean? Talk. Standing in the paint mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? My drive and my, and my passion is always going to get me to where I want to go, you know right. what I'm saying? So I'm never going to fool when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. but, so let me ask you this, big dog. You know, how many? I don't know. You ain't got to say no name, but how many people do you see somebody on your team that had mentors? What What made you say, okay, for me to get to that next level or overcome, you know, uh, negative opinions of others? How How to uh, navigate? Did you, you Did you get a mentor? You see other people mentor. What made you? Yeah. So how I got my mentor. Man, I was always a person that was never afraid to seek knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. And the game I got from my mentor is that. You know, knowledge ain't free because you still got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you hear that? Make sure, hey, listen, repeat that for us. Knowledge ain't free. You still got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I learned that from him. So I was never afraid to give game. I was never afraid to even soak in the game, mm -hmm. to just listen. You know what I mean? I had teammates, my big homie, Brandon Flowers, you know, shout taught out me how to shout out B Flow, man, big bro, taught me how to watch him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sat there and broke me down different plays and this is what you expect on big plays. This is what you expect after this. You know, so he, he taught me a lot about that, and I soaked in that game to know how to mm -hmm. get a game. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So whenever I see people that's going through something, you know, I've always been that person where I kind of just sit back and watch mm -hmm. and observe yep. and see how they're how they going to navigate mm -hmm. through something before I just intervene. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you got to let God do his thing. Talk there, talk. You know what I mean? You got to let him do his thing. You know, sometimes it's good to just fall back and just, mm -hmm. just listen mm -hmm. or watch and observe before you – you react mm -hmm. so uh yeah now when people dealing with stuff man i'm always that that person that uh you know be that that person they could talk to mm -hmm. or that phone that phone call that they could come and holler at just because they know my experience they know mm -hmm. my story mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i mean and what's and you said i want to ask you this here as well you know you're talking about b flower will help you with films and things like that uh what what does it take to be a great player and what does it take to be a pro bowl player mm. You got to want it first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You definitely got to put the work in. Uh, um, and I, I, would say, I would say film study is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the more that you get in tune with your strengths, maximizing your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, um, and just being intent with, with, with wanting to be great. Like, you got to go out and do it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And not a lot of people cut like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes certain things happen for certain people, but the people that put the work in, yeah. You know what I mean? They always gonna climb out on top. And that's 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 been me. That's been mm -hmm. my story. Despite everything that I've been through, when I'm on that field, they mm -hmm. know what time it is with me. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. just because that's just the way I'm cut. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm cut like that. And I'm always gonna I'm always gonna put in the work. I'm always gonna wanna be ahead of the game when it comes to the film study, when it comes to understanding my position, understanding my opponent, mm -hmm. how they gonna attack me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that 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 be the main thing that sets people over the top is is knowing how people are gonna attack, mm -hmm. you know, your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. What did you show on film the way that they might see? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I've always been engaged in that. Do you feel like some players or even you, do you ever like be like, man, I got all this money now? Do it make you, you know, some people probably get content or complacent, like I made it. But you don't really make make it until you leave a legacy. So what's your take on those who just get the money and don't and don't perform? Yeah, I mean, 
I can only I can only tap into what what happened to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't really know people's day to day on how they mm-hmm. operate. Um, I salute all the people that get paid. Or obviously, we in a in a business where everybody can get yeah. their money, right? So, but as far as me, man, I I don't I don't been arms reach mm-hmm. from a from a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just keeping all the way one hundred. If I didn't get hurt, I know I would have touched over sixty seventy million dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but that wasn't that wasn't the case. Um, so just based off of my journey and what I dealt with, like the best way I could reference, and it's almost like mm-hmm. when you see them greyhounds, yeah. right? And they race them, and then it's a it's a rabbit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They never catch the rabbit, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But they continuously mm-hmm. chasing after it, right? Mm-hmm. I was always the one trying to chase to that next deal, just mm-hmm. because I knew that deal would kind of help my situation. Mm-hmm. I want to take care of my family, you know what I mean? I want, of course, you want to make that fifty, sixty million dollars, right? Mm-hmm. But I had to get out of that chase mode, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and form some gratitude of just being thankful for what it is I do got. Mm-hmm. But that's just me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's me and my story, so I'm in tune with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm out of the chase mode, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, got, I got enough. What, what I need is enough, you yes. know what I mean? And I'm, I'm always be blessed. I'm always had that gratitude and, uh, you know, just be thankful for the opportunities that I'm given. I like that, man. I, you can tell that with time come growth yeah. and you no longer chase the bag, you're chasing the gift okay. because you understand that the gift going to make room for you. Yeah. You know, so just to hear that, I believe that what you said can help a lot of individual. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we don't understand what God is doing, but we know he's doing it for a good reason. Right. And that take time, though. Mm-hmm. That take time to even realize that, um, you know, um, it's, it's sometimes it just be unfortunate situations mm-hmm. that you deal, got to deal mm-hmm. with, you know what I mean? But uh, being um, intent with it, mm-hmm. you know. Everything always gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. Sure. Let me ask you this here. What's you know, you go high school, college, or no, let's do the let's do the lead. What's one of your most emotional moments? Was it draft day, injury, interception, or what you know? I got a lot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh I would say some emotional ones though. Um I started off my career playing against Baylor, and I ended my senior year. Mm-hmm. My last game was against Baylor. I had one of my best games mm-hmm. of college. So just seeing how that went full circle, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Starting from Baylor, being exposed, mm-hmm. being that person mm-hmm. that everybody was pointing the finger at on why you lost the game, to fast forward being the one that, you know, made things happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, that was like a, a big moment in itself. Uh, getting drafted, of course, mm-hmm. you know, that was, that's something that you, you know, you dream of as yeah. a kid to be able to work across that stage, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So being able to do that, make your family proud, mm-hmm. not only make yourself proud, I mean, that, 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 that in itself is real. And then uh, getting to the, to the league, and uh, my first interception was back home Ooh. in the Bay against the Raiders. I thought you were turn. Win the game. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, I had over about like 60, 65 people at the game, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so being able to have that moment, intercept that ball mm-hmm. back at the crib. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel special, Yeah, that, that was lit. That was lit. That's good, so, man. You know, just to have that moment to share with your family for a lifetime, yeah. that worked more than anything. Absolutely. But what I like more about your story, man, like like I told you, you, you've been one of my favorite corners. Yeah. And I like that dog. I like people got that dog in them. But to see how you uh, – face opposition, you was an underdog, you know, you went to JUCO and came from Cali to TCU, it's hot down here in Dallas. Hot. You know, <laughs> boy, explain how that, how, that, how that transition was, man. Bro, that, man, that shit was real. <laughs> Y'all talking about 100 degree weather with humidity, we ain't got none of that in Cali. <laughs> you know what I mean? So getting, getting, getting over here from Cali, man, experiencing that heat, mm-hmm. man, it was a few times, man, I'm like, I'm about to chop these dreads off, boy. <laughs> it was that hot. It was hot. And then my first two years at uh, TCU, you mm-hmm. know, we didn't have no AC in the indoor. Ooh. So we going in there, full helmet, full shoulder pads, everything is blazing in there, 114, Dang. 24 periods, Dang. five minutes each period. Man, I, my first, it was either the first, was it the first day or the second day? That's how you know mm-hmm. I was towed up. I don't even remember the first or the second day. <laughs> I had collapsed. Dang. From being hot. For he's being also- hot. I'm on the IV down. They got blankets mm-hmm. on me. You know, everybody there that's, that's from Texas, like, yeah. man, welcome to Texas. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was my welcome moment right mm-hmm. there, though. The, uh, the heat out here different. Yeah. Different. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, you know, I ended up embracing it and it worked out. But, 
This shit ain't no joke out here. Man, I still, listen, I've been out here for what? In, well, I've been in Texas my whole life, but Dallas, Texas, the, you know, Fort Worth, whatever, the heat different up here, man. Just so you got dreads, you got heaven on inside with no AC. I know the, man, I know you'll feel that. I know you'll feel that. Real, real. Let but, alone you, 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 you running and you cutting and you mm -hmm. doing all these different mm -hmm. things that make you tired. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that heat, you know, that shit is going to make you a break. Well, and what about this here? About, you know, you're from Cali playing in the snow or practicing in the snow. How was that? I mean, it only happened like twice. Okay. Um, and that experience was cool mm -hmm. just because you know, I ain't never played in no snow. So it was <laughs> like uh, practicing it. So I was out there just embracing it and mm -hmm. having fun with it. So that part wasn't too bad. So you rather play in the snow than versus? Yeah. I mean, if you play in the snow, you rarely got to worry about passes yeah. being thrown. You're just going to be it's running, the, yeah. running the ball. Facts. Yeah, you know I mean, so I'll take a rainy game all day. Facts. But you did, so in the league, did you play in any snowy days? Nah, we ain't had no snow. Uh-uh, I ain't played no snow games. Definitely played in some rainy games. Man. Uh, but yeah, nah, I ain't catch no snow. See, let me ask you this here too, big dog. Let's start with college. Who was your, your toughest opponent that you had to guard? In college? Yeah. Hmm. I faced a lot of challenge. I'd probably say OBJ. OBJ? Yeah, OBJ was real deal. That was my senior year. We played at the Cowboys Stadium okay. against LSU. We didn't have some good battles. OBJ was, he was special. Shout out to OBJ. Yeah, he was special, for sure. What about uh, in the league? I know you got a couple for league, yeah. right? Yeah, Cooper. Okay. Mari Cooper, AJ Green. Woo. Antonio Brown was, mm. was, was, was a real one, bro. Um, I ain't never seen somebody jog out the huddle after every play. Like he give you the illusion that he was giving the mm -hmm. ball, getting getting the ball. Mm -hmm. You know that was one of my best games, mm -hmm. though. Um, I would say I would say uh, AB was AB was real. He, sure. he was a dog. Yeah, yeah, that boy was a dog. So who 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 ran the best route to you? Uh, uh. Route wise, that I seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went against one of the best route runners every day in practice. Yeah, Keenan Allen. Allen yep. You know what I mean, yep. so he he got me. Right for every mm -hmm. opponent. Mm -hmm. I know, know he did. I, I'm, I'm gonna see everything. He ain't in big. Practice. Oh yeah, yeah. he didn't get busy. So I, I would say him kind of helped me for all mm -hmm. everybody that I was seeing. But Mark Cooper was somebody, he, as you know, that his, mm -hmm. his route running is one of the best in the league for sure. Yeah. Stephon Diggs as well. Oh yeah, so, oh yeah. Stephon Diggs, a dog yeah, too. Get busy. What about the quarterback? Like, what quarterback just really just pick, just be picking? Just ooh. <sighs> Drew Brees was special. A Rod. A Rod was mm -hmm. probably the most challenging just because of the ball placement. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He can he can throw a back shoulder forty yards. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> That's different. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna say A Rod for sure was probably one of the hardest. So like I always I always admire A Rod game. That's one of my favorite quarterback. So out of all the quarterback you face, you feel like A Rod got that dog to him? Yeah. That, that, like that. Most deaf. He talked noise with it. Yeah, yeah. most deaf. He play. He play against Tom Brady. Nah, I ain't never get a chance to play against Tom. They say Tom be talking him. too, though. They say he got yeah, the dog Tom, in him. Tom, Tom. Yeah, obviously, as you mm -hmm. know, his mm -hmm. resume speaks for yeah. himself. Um, but I'm gonna say a rod, a rod, a rod, still talk some shit to him. Yeah. And Phil, <laughs> even in practice, Phil mm -hmm. Rivers, you know. Oh, I like Phil. Yeah, I Phil, like, Phil he, got yeah. dog in him too. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. gonna he gonna trash talk for sure. Yeah. So, like I said, I had I had a lot of. Things in practice that I saw in the game mm -hmm. that was just, you know, light work sometimes. What about the running back? What running back, man, was just hard to tackle? Ooh, beast mode. Ooh, I know Marshall Lane. He was different. Yeah, that was my rookie year. We played against Seattle. It was a few times where it's like, do I want to throw that shoulder yeah. in there? Yeah. Nah, go ahead, linebacker. Go ahead, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Beast Mode, obviously, yeah. man, he, 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 ain't stay, he ain't trying to stand in front of that. You know what I mean, so mm -hmm. I, would, I would say him. I, done, I of course, done had to hit him a few yeah. times, but, you know, I'm, I'm down here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I'm going to say Beast Mode for sure. AP. AP, I'm going to say, yeah, I know AD. AP was a monster. AP was a monster. He ran hard, too. Who ran the, who ran the hardest out of him at uh, Beast Mode? I'm going I'm to still go Marshawn. Marshawn, okay. still go Marshawn. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, right now, I'm going to ask you your pick. This is your pick. Who are your top three quarterbacks of all time? Three? Yeah. Let's do top five. Ah. Of all time. No order. Mm -mm, no order. 
Brady, A-Rod, that I've seen, because yeah. I mean, obviously yeah. you can say Joe Montana yeah. down with the way. I'm going to just talk about what I've seen. Okay. So Brady, A-Rod, Breeze. I'm going to throw Pat Mahomes in there. Yep. Oh. Damn, bro. That's tough, dog. I'm, I could give you four. That's the four I could okay. give you. The four? I give you you want to do that? think of the fifth one. You want to put, uh, I don't know, uh, Andrew Luck was pretty decent. Yeah. Huh? Luck had, Luck had, Luck had, Luck had some moments for sure. Man. Yeah, that's tough. That's just gonna yeah. be my four. I ain't even okay. about to throw another name. Out okay, there. okay. Yeah. Let's let's do uh, let's do receivers. Your top five. I know that you got seen. Yeah, you play against Megatron, right? Yeah. But, yeah, I'm gonna go Julio. Okay. Megatron. Mm -hmm. AB. Two. Even though I ain't play against mm -hmm. him, I still gotta throw them in there. Moss Ooh. and To. What Jay Rice? Jay Rice, yeah. I mean, obviously, he the, he the, he the, he the, 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 the face of, uh, yeah. of it. Is. So I don't, you know, I feel like Dion is somebody, mm -hmm. he the reason why people play the position. So yeah. I would never, I don't think nobody mm -hmm. ever, you know, never put somebody over him. Mm -hmm. Same with, with Jerry Rice. Right? Mm -hmm. so they, okay. They the, they the standard for what it is, right? Okay. But uh, T.O. and Moss is in there. Yeah, those people that I that I seen that you know you grew up on mm -hmm. on them. So first thing we say, Mawson. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so you gotta yeah, put yeah, Mawson yeah. there, man. Oh, real. And what's I'm gonna ask you the top five corners. Corner, huh? You know, come for that. Right you, now, even if you put yourself in there, or right whatever, now, uh, since you've been in the league or whenever. Yeah, I right now I would say, no order. Pat Sertain, Marshawn Lattimore, mm -hmm. Slay. I, I, I like Sauce, Sauce Gardner. Gardner. Um, who the fifth one? I'm going to go Ramsey. Ramsey, okay. Ramsey, ah, Xavier Howard. I, I yeah. went for Xavier Howard. Shout out to Xavier, That's kind of hard. That's mm -hmm. kind of hard to say five. Mm -hmm. um, but since I was in the league, when I was playing at the time, mm -hmm. Revis, yep. Talib, Dog, uh, Revis, Talib, I'm gonna throw myself in there. Um, I've always been a fan of Slay, respecting mm -hmm. him. Ramsey, respecting him. Mm -hmm. I used to, man, person was a dog, Janoris Jenkins. Yep. He used to be like that. Mm -hmm. So I used to, I used to like watching his game too. Um, but nah, man, it was, it was. It's a lot of corners out there that you, you know, mm -hmm. respect, man. It's hard to do that. It's hard to play that position mm -hmm. consistent. Exactly. Every, every year. Exactly. You know I feel like one of the tougher positions because you're facing everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You on that island. You on that island. Yeah. You play a lot. So what 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 coverage you play a lot? Was it man to man? Man, man that's my thing. Mano y mano. Mano. Yeah. You love that, don't you? Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's do it. You talking to him? No, I don't even talk trash. I don't. I, don't, I respect the game yeah. too much. So it's yeah. just like, and I know they ain't gonna say nothing to mm -hmm. me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? The respect is just what it is. But mm -hmm. if they bark, I'm gonna bark back. You come with it. But mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't really talk too much trash out there. I just go out there and do what I got to do. Turn them up, huh? Yeah, I know it. I know it. <laughs> What's what one court? Well, cornerback, you know, that, that kind of like taught you the game. Hey, you been around somebody like, hey, big dog, this is how I did it for these years. You know, this you got to spec. Anybody like? Yeah, I, I'm like I said before. I'm a, I'm a credit flow. Okay. But you know, for literally kind of just teaching me mm -hmm. um, about the position, mm -hmm. breaking down the film. But then I was always, always a student of the game mm -hmm. too. Like I'm, I'm gonna have on my iPad mm -hmm. all the top corners mm -hmm. they film. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna watch their big plays. I'm gonna watch they, they, they targets. I'm gonna watch the whole thing because mm -hmm. I'm studying it because I want to be the best. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then even if, you know, I'm hollering at people throughout the off season and you know, uh, whether we, you know, giving game back and forth. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I'm about as far as just that. Positioning itself on a day to day, I'm gonna I'm I'm give it to my big homie, so.
Shout yeah. out to Flo, man. Shout out to Flo. And also, what people want to know, what, we, what can we expect from you going forward, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm healthy. Okay. 100% you know healthy? I mean? I'm 100%. Okay. I'm 100%, man. Despite everything that I went through on both ends, because like I said, I did both ACLs, both Achilles, my body back in alignment. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm back feeling explosive. And uh, yeah, it's it's one of them things where I'm gonna step mm -hmm. in the paint and keep rolling. Keep as rolling. long as the opportunity is there, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. I like you know that. I mean, I'm a uh, I'm gonna strive for it to you know until they tell me no. I like that, man. You know, big shout out, salute you, man. Uh, I love your mentality. Yeah. You know, when you reached out to me, man, we connect. It been genuine and real, authentic since day one. Yeah. And just to have you on this podcast, let people know that no matter what you go through, what you're going through. Like you can overcome, yeah. and just give us some 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 gems, some motivation of you know not only re, uh, pertaining to football but real life. Cause this stuff get real like life. Just to just to piggyback up yeah. on what you said, you know, when you DM me initially, yeah. bro, I wasn't in that mind uh, frame. You know what I mean? Um, I can't remember the date. It might have been like either early January mm -hmm. or even last year, mm -hmm. December, somewhere around that. And uh, I ended up reaching back out mm -hmm. to you, you know, and. Uh, I think over that time frame, uh, I got I got in the right headspace on where I needed to be to even come on this platform. So sure. salute to you for that. Pretty sure. Uh, to even reaching out, bro, because at that time, man, I again, bro, I was in a another dark moment. I just had another back to back ACL and Achilles injury happen. So, um, uh, so now fast forward, man, just the motivation I could give anybody, man, just when you're dealing with. The adversity, man, the thing that I learned, man, sometimes it's cool to change the setting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The setting is everything. You know, when you're in those those dark moments, you think to stay clouded, you think to stay in that sunken place, but you change the setting, man. You get outside, you go to the beach, you go get a different vision mm -hmm. for a, for a circumstance. You know, I think it's going it's gonna to brighten up mm -hmm. uh, the situation, mm -hmm. but not being afraid to step into that dark place either because you know I feel like your dark moments bring you the most clear mm -hmm. right and um, I also learned even reading in the book man uh, uh, on the opposite of fear is what's for you Ooh. you know what I mean on, and, and fear to break it down man it's, it's either you can forget everything and run mm -hmm. or face everything and rise you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying and so uh, I, I stepped into that into that dark moment you know wholeheartedly just because of Everything that I was going through, mm -hmm. but it was it was breaking me down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so to fast forward to this one, being that it was the fourth one, mm -hmm. I knew what the dark moments felt like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I I didn't want to I didn't want to go backwards. You know what I mean? And um, uh, I feel as though you know the devil and how it operate, man, it would try to make you be focused on the past, mm -hmm. right? Focus on the past and messes up the future. Mm -hmm. But the present moment is all you got. Come on now. You know what I mean? So I had to tap into that present moment on an everyday basis, man. And a lot of people are afraid to look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You know what I mean, that mirror ain't no joke, Facts. man. You gotta, you gotta stand firm looking in that mirror. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's, uh, you know, when you're dealing with the adversity, man, you gotta look in that mirror. You gotta get some quiet time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You gotta get quiet, man, and, 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 and listen. Uh, wholeheartedly on what you know the spirit is, is, mm -hmm. is, is, is whether you believe in something or not but you gotta you gotta get in that that quiet space mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i live by this you know i say to myself every day you know i am who i am who i'm not i'll never be oh, what's heavy. for me won't miss me as long as i stay true to me Woo. you know what i mean so uh, I'm, I'm intent bro mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm intent with who i am bro wholeheartedly bro i i, I stand firm in that mirror every mm -hmm. day that self-talk mm -hmm. is everything you know what i mean and i, I do that on the daily mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and um, so that's just some 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 gems that I could drop with people. Uh, and uh, another thing, man, a lot of people, you know, that even you know dealing with social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? That could that could that could break you too. Yep. You know, and I feel victim to that. You know, because when you on when you on the top of the mountain, man, everything is lovely. Facts. You know what I mean? And um, you know, when you hit rock bottom, you know, a lot of people that. Was in your circle mm -hmm. ain't necessarily in your corner. Come on now, you feel come me? on man. So I had to experience that, man. And, and I, again, man, I'm always reference to my mentor, bro. Mm -hmm. That's my OG, for mm -hmm. real. 
And um, he taught me so much, man. But I done picked up so much game from him and just perspectives from him. That I'm in a band one time and I'm just like thinking. Because, you know, most people, let's just say you got to be up at 8. Mm-hmm. But you wake up at 7.30. Mm-hmm. What's the first thing most people are going to do? They're going to grab yeah, their phone. phone. Yep. Right? So as I, I'm sitting there one day and I'm just thinking like, damn. If you're picking up your phone, going to social media before you look in the mirror, are you creating habits of putting yourself second? Mm. So I had to like look at it deeper like that. Like, damn, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm over here looking at what this person doing before I even go look at myself in the mirror and try to figure out what I'm going to do today. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What's on the agenda for me? So I always make sure when I wake up, it's like, nah, I'm finna, I'm finna meditate. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. finna, you know, reflect. You know what I mean? I'm like being tuned and being intent with what's mm-hmm. going on today before I go give my attention to somewhere else. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's some stuff that you got to do, man, is being real, real intentional with what's going on. You know what I mean? Goals is one thing, but you got to be intent. Mm-hmm. So, I like that, man. You know, uh, I would say, you know, a lot of people get on social media start comparing. Comparing is a thief. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once you yeah. start looking comparing up. Comparing highlight reel. Yep. That's all you're doing. Yep. And it puts you in a space where you can feel depressed, yeah. you, feel, you know, anxiety start flaring up, different things like that. So yeah. the routine you said, you know, before, you know, if you grab your phone before you look in the mirror or do your praise, you put yourself yourself second. second. You yeah. know, if you if you second, you're not first. Yeah. That means you gotta be last. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. people focus on what's first, and I uh, I respect that. And before I let you go, man, um, let us know. What's your what's, what's, what type of music you listen to before you go on the field? Man, it depends on. We'll get my you pumped, man. We'll turn on that my big mood, dog. Man, it depends on my mood. Um, I could I could go, damn, bro. I could go meet, okay, Nip, future, um, little baby, little dirt. Mm-hmm. Like it just depends yeah. on whatever mm-hmm. whatever I'm in at that moment. Mm-hmm. Um. Mozzie. Yeah, Mozzie, a little Mozzie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a variety. I'm a music head, bro. I okay. love music, man. Okay. So, and um, battle raps. I watch battle Me raps too. heavy, too. So, yeah, I, I, um, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm fully, in, fully in tune with the culture. For sure, so. man. That's good. Listen, I want to say, man, thank you for coming on to this show, man. I know this is going to help a lot of people. You know, you drop a lot of gems, you know. Ever since we've been shooting the ones and twos since you landed, I'm like, hey, brother, yeah. it's really in tune. You're very intentional with yourself, man. You don't yeah. find a lot of people who are intentional. Yeah. And, hey, keep pushing, keep grinding. Always. Wherever you go, wherever team you play for, I know you're going to turn them up. Always. It's not what's on you, it's what's in you. That's and you're a big dog. Sure. So I appreciate, I appreciate you coming you, on, man. You already Much love. Up, this ain't the last time. Listen, this is not the last time you're going to be on this show. It's going to be a part two. But thank y'all for tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe. Ring that bell. It's the big dog. I'm going to talk to you. Turn him up, George. It's a little, baby. Yeah, that's real.